Hello everybody, my name is Chad Kroll, and in this video we're going to be installing a GitLab runner for your self-managed GitLab instance, and more specifically, a Kubernetes executor. So we're going to install a runner in our Kubernetes cluster. This video is a part of a series that includes installing your own self-managed GitLab instance, and also a part of the course that is the container security course, which walks you through how to deploy an app using GitLab CI/CD and secure that uh, containerized application through its lifecycle and through the CI/CD pipeline to your Kubernetes cluster. Check that course out in the description below. There'll be a link to access that course. So we're starting off here in our GitLab UI. And if you haven't seen the previous video, which is installing a self-managed GitLab server, please see that. But in the lower left-hand corner, let's click on Admin, and let's click on CI/CD, and then Runners. And this is where we'll add our runner. So let's click on Create Instance Runner in the top right corner, and let's give this runner a tag. Let's just call it Kubernetes. And maybe we could do Shared as well, being that this can be a shared runner between all of our jobs in GitLab. That's all we'll do for now, and we'll click on Create Runner down below. And here's where we select the operating system. So we're running inside of a Kubernetes cluster, which is running the Linux operating system. So we'll go ahead and choose Linux. And we'll scroll down to step one, and we'll copy and paste this in our notepad. And so we'll have that for when we go to install the runner via a Helm chart in a second. So we're going to skip uh, step two and step three here and go over to our Kubernetes cluster now. OK, here we are on our Kubernetes cluster. We have a control plane node and a worker node, so just a two, two node cluster. And if we don't already have Helm installed on our cluster, we can go ahead and get the binary using this command. And all the commands are below, so you can uh, copy and paste if you wish to follow along. We can go ahead and um, untar that tar file, and then move that binary over to uh, user local bin. So let's clear the screen. And now if we run Helm, we'll see the uh, help pages. And then that'll be an indication that Helm is installed. So let's clear the screen again. And now that we have Helm installed, we can add our repo. That is the GitLab, GitLab charts repo. And we can run Helm repo update to grab the latest charts, just in case. And just to make sure that we're keeping things separate here, we're going to create a new namespace called GitLab runner. This runner is uh, going to be um, spinning up as a pod to run our jobs. So we want to keep this in a separate namespace. So we'll create a namespace named gitlab-runner. And finally, we're going to install the Helm chart using the Helm install command in the GitLab runner namespace. And the name of the uh, Helm chart, we're going to name it GitLab runner. And then we're going to use that chart from the uh, charts repo called gitlab slash gitlab-runner. We're going to add our GitLab URL, which is, for me, gitlab.ddnsking.com. I got that from the noip.com website for free, and that was in the last video. The runner token is the token that we generated from the GitLab UI just a moment ago. And then the um, runners privileged equals true. That means that we can uh, run this in privileged mode, so we can um, potentially build images using this pod, so kind of a Docker and Docker situation. And then the RBAC create equals true. So this is for uh, permissions for this runner to uh, create things in our Kubernetes cluster and create, delete, update, all those things inside of the Kubernetes cluster that it needs to do. And then the service count that we want to create for this, uh, set that to true because we want this to um, have its own service account that's running inside of the Kubernetes cluster. So we'll run that. And just after a few seconds, we should see that the GitLab runner should now be registered against the GitLab instance reachable at the URL of your GitLab server. So let's go over to our GitLab server and see if that's successfully registered. But first, I just want to show you a couple things. So let's clear the screen. And uh, first, I'll be able to see the pods inside of that GitLab runner namespace that we created. And we do see that there is a GitLab runner that's going to be used for future jobs. And if there are any problems with any 
uh, jobs that are running or you know you can uh, troubleshoot this pod just as you would any other pod i can do a logs command to get out the logs from this pod and we'll see the the runner logs as well as any other errors that may have come up um, when the pod started to run so now we can go over to the gitlab ui and scroll to the very bottom if you're still at that screen to add a runner and you can go to view runners or from the left hand side you can go to gitlab CSCD and runners and now we see we have a uh, GitLab runner created and it's online. So that's good. So now uh, when we're creating our CSV pipelines, we can use this as a runner that will run our uh, pipelines just as we just as we would any other um, pipeline in GitLab. But this time it's using the Kubernetes executor, which means that it's using a pod, uh, spinning up a pod, then running your job and then uh, deleting that pod right after, which perhaps is a more efficient way of running your CICD pipelines if you have access to a Kubernetes cluster. Again, this is all in the course that's called the Container Security Course on Cube Skills, And you'll be able to uh, learn not only about how to create your cluster, create your GitLab server, and create your runner, but also how to build images in your runner with a pod, which is, which is kind of a, a tricky situation. And for the course, we used uh, Kaneko to do that and uh, lots of other things to be able to not only deploy your app to Kubernetes cluster, but also secure that app and go through the best practices to make sure that you're not um, deploying insecure pods. So that's it, so that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.